Algebra 1, number 2.3b. In the last video, we added rational numbers using a number line, and now we're going to do it without a number line. So we saw we can add any two rational numbers by using a number line, and we can add them by following rules and not using a number line. So here's the first rule. When we're adding rational numbers that have the same sign, we just add their absolute values and use the same sign. So my little saying is, like signs, like the add-ends. So if we're adding a negative 3 plus a negative 4, we just add the absolute values, which is without the negative sign, it's a 3 plus a 4, and we take the same sign. They're both negative, so our answer is going to be negative. See? Like the signs, like the add-ends. When we're adding different signs, we find the difference between the two rational numbers and use the sign of the greater, the biggest, absolute value, the one that's farthest from zero. So for different signs, my little saying is different, difference, absolutely. Because you have to remember to use the sign of the greater absolute value. That's why absolutely is important in this little saying. So let's say we have negative 5 plus 2, and that 2 is a positive 2, so that's a negative and a positive. What we do is we add their abs we find the difference between their absolute value, the absolute value of five, negative 5 is 5, and the absolute value of a positive 2 is 2. So what's the difference between 5 and 2? It's 3. And what's the sign of the greater absolute value? The negative 5 is the greater value. So it, we're going to take that negative sign and give it to our answer. So negative 5 plus 2 ends up becoming a negative 3. See, we found the difference between the two numbers and then gave the answer the sign of the larger number. See, the larger absolute value, okay? So we've got a negative 3. And we can put parentheses around a negative number to keep the signs apart when it might be confusing, but that's just to help us see it. And we don't have to do this. It's not necessary. So we could have negative 2 plus negative 3 in parentheses, and then it kind of helps our eyes, doesn't it? Because it keeps that plus and that minus apart. But it isn't always necessary. If the negative is in front and the last one is a positive, we can just see it's negative 3 plus 2. See? So look at these. Negative 2 plus a negative 3. They both have a negative sign, so they have like signs. And the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and the absolute value of negative 3 is just a 3. So we add the 2 and the 3, we get a 5, and we use the sign that the add-ins had that were the same, the negative. So our answer is a negative 5. See? Let's try this one. This is really easy. We have a positive 4 and a positive 5, and they're both positives. And the absolute value of 4 is 4, the absolute value of 5 is 5, 4 plus 5 is 9, and we use the sign that both add-ins had, they both were positive, so it's a positive 9. See? All right, now they've got different signs. We've got a negative 3 plus 2, so that's a positive 2. We find their absolute value, that's negative 3 is a 3, and 2 is just a 2. We find their difference, different sign, find the difference. So 3 and 2, the difference between 3 and 2 is 3 take away 2, that's a 1. Now we take the sign of the greater absolute value, that's the negative 3, so it's a negative 1, see? You find their difference when they're different, and you take the bigger absolute value. Different, difference, absolutely. Let's try this one. We've got 5 plus a negative 8, and they have different signs. That's a positive, and that's a negative. Well, the absolute value of 5 is 5, and the absolute value of a negative 8 is 8. What's the difference between an 8 and a 5, or a 5 and an 8? We do some subtraction, and we see the answer is a 3. When we take the sign of the greater absolute value, that would be the negative 8. We give the negative to the 3, so the answer is negative 3. See? Let's try another one with fractions. Negative 5 eighths plus a negative 1 fourth, they have like signs. So the answer is going to be a negative. Like signs, like the add-ins. So what we do is we find the absolute value of negative 5 eighths, which is 5 eighths, and the absolute value of 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth, and we just add them. But we got to get the denominators the same, right? So 4 is going to go up to 8, so the numerator goes to 2. Now we have 5 eighths plus 2 eighths. That's 7 eighths, but because they both had like signs, it's going to be like the add-ins, we have a negative 7 eighths, see? 
And keep in mind, we can still use the commutative and associative properties of addition. When you have a long line of positive and negative numbers like this, we can group all the negatives together and we can group all the positives together. So don't forget that one's a negative. He's not in parentheses because he didn't have to be. So all we have to do is add all the negatives together and because they're all negatives and they all have like signs, like sign, like the add-ends, so the answer is going to be a negative. We added them all up and got a negative 125. Then we added the positives together and got 67. So now our equation is a negative 125 plus a positive 67. And they have different signs. So we're going to find the difference between their absolute value. The absolute value of a negative 125 is 125. And the absolute value of a positive 67 is 67. We find the difference by subtracting and we get 58. And we take the sign of the greater absolute value the negative 125, so the answer is negative, see? Now, there's links in the description of this video for grade 6 videos on adding uh, positive and negative integers with like and unlike signs, and if this was a little confusing for you, you might want to watch those because they're a little bit simpler and easier to understand. So, just remember that rational numbers are any number that can be written as a simple fraction as long as the denominator is not zero, and integers are whole numbers and they're opposites across zero. Okay, so negative six and positive six are opposites and they're both integers. And remember, to add integers like signs, it's going to be like the add-ins. And if they have different signs, you find the difference and then use the sign of the greater absolute value, the one that's farthest from zero. Okay, so we're, we're going to talk about additive inverse coming up and I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. An additive inverse is, we've discussed it before in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, but for those of you who are not my normal subscribers, it may be new to you, and it'll be nice to know about, okay? We'll talk about zero pairs. Bye.